Hi, I'm Guy Powell, and welcome to the next episode of The Backstory on the Shroud of Turin. If you haven't already done so, please visit GuyPowell.com and sign up for more episodes. I am the author of the upcoming book, The Only Witness, A History of the Shroud of Turin, a historical fiction tracing a possible history of the Shroud over the last two millennia. Today, we'll be speaking with Bob Siefker. He is one of the preeminent experts on the Shroud. We'll be talking about a handful of topics and look forward to the discussion. But before we get started, I wanted to tell a short story. There's many hints to the Shroud over the his history of the Shroud, and uh, there's even a couple that are in the Bible. And in particular, there's one with Paul in Galatians uh, 3.1, where he says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly ex exhibited as crucified. Well, don't know exactly whether that was a reference to the Shroud, but it certainly could have been. Anyway, most evidence uh, of the Shroud comes from Luke, that the women and Peter found the cloth in the tomb, and there are many other evidences that seem to show that there was a special cloth related to Jesus' burial in the tomb. And it is that that we're going to talk about today. That is what all the fuss is about. So with that, let me introduce uh, Bob Siefker. Bob was brought up in California and attended UCLA on a Navy scholarship with a major in engineering. I was an engineer too, and in the meantime, I've now gone over to the dark side of uh, marketing and other things, but I started as an engineer as well. After, my nearly, after his nearly five years of naval service, he worked on the software industry, eventually serving as VP for two different software companies, the second being in Colorado. And it was in Colorado that he became an associate of the Turin Shroud Center, headed by Dr. John Jackson. And he, as you all know, was the leader of the 1978 Shroud of Turin Research Project, also known as STERP. Bob has been co-author and editor of the TSC book on the Shroud entitled the Shroud of Turin, a critical summary of the observations, data, and hypotheses. And there's some really good stuff on that, and I definitely recommend people to go off and uh, purchase that. And most recently, he has been involved in the research on the so-called miracle of the holy fire, which I find just fascinating. It's a phenomenon that occurs every year at the tomb of Christ in the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem on Orthodox Holy Saturday. With that, Bob, thank you for being uh, here, and let's get started. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction. Good, good to be here, Guy. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very uh, looking forward to your explanation on, on uh, certainly the shroud uh, and the uh, the miracle of the holy fire, and also some of the other stuff that you've been working on. So, with that, why don't you tell us what your backstory is on uh, how you got involved in the shroud of Turin? Well, uh, it, it all comes from uh, my career uh, in the software industry and, and uh, going from California to uh, uh, the Denver area to join a, a software company there. And it was while I was working in, in Denver that I met John Jackson. Uh, I was on the church council of our church and they said, Bob, I'd, we'd like you to schedule a, a speaker to come in and talk to us. You know, they did this a couple times a year and I did some research and I ran across the Shroud of Turin being in Colorado. I hadn't known much about it before, although I had been introduced to the Shroud. Uh, interestingly, I, I was given some images of the Shroud by my grandmother when I was a little kid, and so I had some knowledge of it. But I uh, ended up uh, asking John to come talk to the church, and he said, hey, by the way, Bob, if you'd like, we've got room for volunteers. And uh, this was almost at the time that I was set for retiring. I retired early, I was fortunate. Um, after retiring, by the way, from the software industry, I went back to uh, the Graduate School of Theology in Berkeley, California, with my wife and I. Our kids were grown and uh, got a master's in theology there. And uh, it was about that time that I met John Jackson and uh, spent 15 years of hard work working with them and volunteering and helping in any way I, I could. Uh, for the last two years, uh, my focus has been drawn to working with Giulio Fonti on some research on the Holy Fire. Equally, maybe even more 
stunning stuff to share on that. Uh, but the shroud is an un, uh, unbelievable object. Uh, it's, it's got my attention that I, I fully believe. One of the conversations I had with, with Fonte was uh, in, the, in the critical summary, I'd said it's a rational judgment. After you look at all the, the data on the shroud, it's a supported rational judgment to come to the conclusion that it's the real thing. And Fonte went, that's stupid. He said, I know the shroud is authentic. And uh, I, I have to uh, grapple with that. I think I know it's authentic too. Uh, it, I know it's a supported rational judgment based on the evidence to come to that conclusion, but some people don't um, or won't either way. But I think Fonte's closer to my position today that I, I am absolutely convinced the shroud is authentic. And I am absolutely also convinced that the holy fire phenomenon is authentic. And yeah. one of the, we'll, we'll get into the linkage between the two, but one uh, buttresses the other. Uh, the holy fire, you know, when they found the shroud in, uh, in the tomb, you read from that uh, gospel passage, uh, it was nighttime. You know, the, the women had run uh, to get John and report to John that they'd taken the body. And they came back, it was still dark, and they were able to see in the tomb. And the orthodox position is that's because there was light in the tomb. The tomb was bright with light. You know, there's talk of an angel being there with, with lit up angel, but the tomb uh, supposedly was was dazzling with light when they, when John showed up and he was able to see into it in the early morning before light, before daybreak and see the shroud and see the other claws in there. Um, so when you look at it, we've always needed an explanation because when you look for an explanation of the shroud uh, image, you always end up with, it's got to be some, because it's scorched onto the cloth. It's not painted or marked onto the cloth. It's not a body image from sweat or any material other than scorching of the material itself, which is a product of some kind of interaction with radiation or light. So it's been a mystery. Uh, what is the source of that light? And I think we now know it's, it's God. Jesus said, I will give you a sign, the sign of Jonah, three days in the tomb. And like the, uh, you know, like the saying says, there's a connection. The light of the holy fire is the source of the shroud's image. And the shroud is a one-time event. Uh, the holy fire is a repeating event, which uh, is very powerful for those that know it. Most people have never heard of it. Yeah, it's certainly.